For today's episode, I have compiled my best Christmas DIYs. So sit back, relax, or even DIY right along with me. But let's get right into the first one. Back in the fall, I made a Dollar Tree Jack Lantern crate and it was a huge hit. So I wanted to make one for a winter theme. We are going to use a little bit of power tool, so let's head outside. Now for the side slats, Dollar Tree sells these, but they were kind of low on stock on these, and so I ended up just getting a couple of extra ones of these, which I like to use for the base. Now this is the width of our crate anyways, and so we would have had to cut these down to match this width. So we're just gonna cut the opposite direction and it actually ends up making it a little bit cheaper because this is the same price as this and we can get two out of these at least and you know, you'd have to get more of these. So this actually cuts down the cost and you have to cut anyway. So we're gonna just go ahead and do this. I am gonna use this as a template just to mark ours, just cause I have it. But just as a point of reference, if you don't have it, it is, Let's measure it just shy of two inches. So if you cut them down to two inch widths, you would be great. Ours, <laughs> not very good that time. We'll cut this and then we'll mark it again because the blade does take out some of the wood. So you don't wanna mark them all unless you're accounting for that. So it will just be easier if we do this. And so I have a compound sliding miter saw that will move as we cut. And so that will help us out. So we'll line this up make sure it's nice and cut okay and then we can just go ahead and use this newly cut one as a template make a mark oops don't want to do that i think i just colored on my hat <laughs> Just make sure you keep your fingers away from the blade. And then we have this left over. We can hold on to that for something else. To give you a visual, this is the bottom, this is the side, and we need to cut this one down because that's what we brought it out for. We've got another one of these inside. <laughs> those cuts were straight cuts and as you can see it is really not that hard to use them now I know not everybody has a miter saw so if you're thinking about tip power tools maybe start with a jigsaw that was my first saw and you can get a lot of things done with that as well and those are very affordable and it doesn't take up very much space so now with our cuts we are ready to assemble you're gonna want to have two of the snowflake tips touching bottom that will be the crate so then you're gonna line it up for this I didn't take measurements you're gonna kind of have to eyeball it a little bit but the idea is to make them all the same so you want to make sure just start with one of them make sure it's upright trace the outside of that um, on the bottom and then you can use it as a guide to line it up above it so just line it up with the original line so they are even because you're gonna have like the two slats on the side you're gonna want to make sure you mark every single one of your solid piece snowflakes that you see that I got here on both sides this way you'll know exactly where to hit your nails into place and hopefully you don't have too many oopsie daisies if you have some go in the wrong spot it's okay that's what putty's for and we are painting this so it's not a big deal the first thing we're gonna do is nail the bottom of our snowflake into like that flat main piece i get these pieces of wood at the dollar tree in their wood section they've really expanded that section and it is so awesome and so much fun use a little wood glue and just tack them with a couple of nails in each little spot into place and then you now with that attached on either side it's time to attach our side slats so then you're going to put on a little bit of wood glue onto the end of your little slat for the sides and then you are going to line it up and then from the other marking from the other side you push down and just put two or three little nails through that and you don't need super long ones but long enough that it will hold it into place and then you just shoot those into place you can do this by hand as well if you're doing it by hand you probably might need another person to hold it in place while you do it just because it will be a little tricky there but then you're gonna do that for all four slats all right 
right, so now we've got that assembled. Now, this side pieces of this, the solid ones are very thin and it doesn't look very substantial. I don't feel like it packs a present. So here's where our main focus, our main star of this show, these more substantial, beefier uh, snowflakes come into play, we are gonna take a little bit of wood glue and glue them over the top of those solid piece ones. And it actually lines up really nicely with those um, solid ones. And this is gonna give us a lot of dimension. And then I just take some clips and clip it into place and let it dry for about 30 minutes or longer, you could do a couple hours and let that dry. And then if you have any little nail holes, go ahead and fill those in. But I found that most of them, if not all of them were covered up with this additional snowflake. So that's it, it's ready to paint. But I knew that spray paint was the way to go because there's a lot of nooks and crannies in there. And I knew that if I could get most of it spray painted, that it would make um, going in with some regular paint a lot easier. So I'm really glad I did that. You could spray paint the entire thing, but I did end up having to take it inside and finish it out with some regular chalk paint or any kind of craft paint would work. And we painted it all out and let that dry. To add some of that dimension back in, I really did want to sand it down and give it like a little bit more of a time-worn look, framing it out with that sanding. And it looks so cute, all styled. You could put this on your dining room table. You could put this on a shelf. It's adorable. I love the way this looks. It looks so high-end. It looks like something that you could have easily paid $25 to $30 for at a store, maybe even more. I mean. I don't even know, but we paid less than $10 for ours. It was probably more in like the seven to $8 range, but isn't it amazing what you can do with a little bit of power tools, a little bit of creativity, and all of these items I got at the Dollar Tree. You would never guess. So I love this and I hope you do too. This next one has really caught my eye and it was just so inexpensive to put together. This one might stretch you a little bit, but bear with me and hopefully I will open your mind. Okay, so we are gonna make a three-dimensional snowflake. And to do this, you could just use two and kind of do cut one in half and and make a plus sign and that would be very simple to do i wanted it to be a little bit more dynamic than that so we are going to cut one of these in half on a 45 degree angle and then a second one on a 45 degree angle two on each side so it's more of like a pie slice if that makes sense i'm going to show you how we're going to do this on the miter saw lay it down flat and I'm actually gonna do it so the hole is right here. Um, and try to square this up right in the middle. Um, that's the goal anyways. <laughs> Hopefully we can do this. And then what we're gonna do here is tilt our blade. And the way we do is we loosen this up over here and then we can just pull it and drop it. And then we'll want to tighten that back up into place. So I do not want you to put your hand on this side of the blade. I don't like the idea of your arm being in the way of this at all. So we are gonna pull it down like this and hold it on the right hand side. I have the blade set at a 27 and a half degree cut. So here we go. So basically, then you can kind of flip this around and it will sit like this. Make sense? So here's like, say this is our ornament. Then we will take this one and this one and attach it like so. Isn't that cool? Let's do one more. Boom don't be nervous but if you are a beginner just stick with the plus sign one i think that would be a good place to start until you're a little bit more comfortable with a miter saw with 
all of our cuts made, I took it inside and I did a combination of E6000 and hot glue to assemble this. It would also work really well to do some sort of epoxy. I think that would make it even more sturdy. But once this dries up, it was pretty strong. So, I mean, I think if you did the hot Gorilla Glue and the E6000 and let it dry really good, you're gonna be good to go. So all you do is you're going to make a mark with the one of your cutoff pieces and find center and draw the line so you know where to place it once you got the glue on because you don't want to have to fidget too much especially with the hot glue because once you stick it down it's kind of there <laughs> so we made a mark down the center and then we rotated the e6000 and the hot glue and placed that in the center and it kind of created like a little v wing thing on one side and then you flip it over and repeat the process and then it's this really cool 3d sculpture and at this point i was like wow this really worked out good i had hopes but it really really worked out good and it was just awesome then this one i would highly 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 recommend you just spray paint it now i used white spray paint i think it would look really pretty in an off-white spray paint um pick the spray paint color of your choice but i just envision snowflakes is white so all of my stuff is gonna be white anyways um just spray paint it and you're gonna flip it rotate it spray paint it dries really quick within like 15 to 30 minutes depending on how humid and hot and all of that all of that you need to take into consideration and there you have it in the end this was a less than five dollars and doesn't it look like such a substantial amazing piece of decor i was blown away by this project if you wanted to drill a hole through the top of this and hang it you could do that that would look really cool i think it looks really cool just as a statement piece on its own on a shelf somewhere on an end table it's really really cool and just think about it for less than five dollars you could turn this into a really cool neighbor gift or friend gift that it looks just so much more high-end than this i found something similar to this for about fifty dollars so i'm telling you this is such a cool project and i hope it had you saying wow i don't know if you've heard but i just launched a female power tool line i think that that would make an excellent christmas gift so let me tell you about that really quick and then i promise we'll get you right back into the diys ladies can we just all agree that the tool aisle is just another boys club don't you think it's time we change that i know i do men's drills are like shoulder pads from the 80s too big too bulky and not sexy at all i present to you the lady jane drill by athena power tools strong enough for a man but made for a woman just look at her her tiffany-esque sparkling blue textured cheetah print handle which feels just as good as it looks no more sacrificing power for style ladies we can have it all style and substance 22,500 bpms and what that really means is a whole lot of power she's got three different settings to conquer everything from drilling to screwing and masonry yes even masonry no more barbie dream house tools for you now listen to the athena drill worried about the weight don't be she's barely over three pounds long lasting battery check quick charging double check but wait there's more lady jane isn't riding solo she comes with a whole entourage a battery a fast charging station and a set of bits all wrapped up in a water resistant cheetah print bag because your tools deserve a cute outfit too reign victorious over your diy project this is not just a tool it's a statement it says you're fierce you're fabulous and you can drill a hole in just about anything whether you're a 35 year old upcycling queen or a 65 year old grandma building a treehouse for your grandchildren the lady jane drill is your new bff our goal is to give you a tiffany experience but with power tools so why settle for drills made by guys for guys it's time to invest in a tool that's made for women by women. Click on the link below and order your Lady Jane drill today. I promise you are going to love it. It's time to unleash your inner DIY goddess and let's show the world what you are made of. 
Oh yeah. Okay, I've got another fun DIY using the same snowflake. So this next one, I, I, I don't even remember how it kind of came to be, but I knew I wanted to make a DIY using the word joy. So I picked up a J and a Y from Michael's 50% off, I believe they were $3 a piece, very affordable. Then of course we're gonna take one of our snowflakes and then we are gonna attach it to a base. So this base was from my scrap pile, I cut it down and I believe it's about 10 and a half inches long and four and a half inches deep. Now there's a little wiggle room here. So if you have a piece that is about those dimensions, you can budge it a little bit. It doesn't need to be super exact. This is just what I use. And this was just a free piece of scrap wood in my pile. So the first thing we're gonna do is center our snowflake on the back. We're gonna use a little bit of wood glue and we're gonna glue that into place and then shoot a couple of nails in through the back of that to hold it into place. Then we're going to attach the J and the Y on either side to spell the word joy. <laughs> okay, do you see what I'm doing here? And then we're going to let that dry a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and spray it, paint it. What color? <laughs> white, of course. Um, I didn't get it painted very, very well. Um, I did the best I can and I am so glad that I did what I did because it really did make it a little bit easier. We are going to then finish painting it out by hand, make sure that it, it's got good coverage. And then I wanted to zhuzh up the snowflake just a little bit. So I took some Mod Podge, brushed that onto the snowflake really, really good. And then I sprinkled some Epsom salt and and then I sprinkled on some like white translucent glitter to really just up the ante and give it a really crystallized snowflake vibe. And then we're gonna let that all dry. Then we are gonna use this as a candle stand. So you place a candle of your choice and it's a really cute way to burn your holiday themed candles, your winter themed candles. It's a really adorable stand. It's a little cuter than just leaving the candle to burn by itself. And and I think it's a way enough that there shouldn't be any flammable issues because we've given it a little bit of room to breathe. You could tuck in some Christmas greenery picks around the candle to make it a really cute statement. Um, you could, again, could use this as a gift and include it with a candle. It's so adorable. I just love how this turned out. I think it looks so much more high end than the about $8 that we have into it. Looks like you could have spent 20 to $30 easy. I love how this turned out. So this next project is super cool. I absolutely love how this turned out, but I couldn't come up with a name for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back out. We're gonna make a couple of simple, simple cuts. Um, you can do this by hand. These are easy, no, no stress on this one. So in order to attach these, we do need to cut these spindles down. Now I get these deck spindles at Lowe's. They're just over $2, super affordable. I use them for a ton of stuff in decor because they're just a great price for a spindle item. So we're gonna attach it to the front, but we don't need all of this excess. So we're gonna make a simple cut just so we have enough for it to attach to. And then we're gonna cut some of the excess off the bottom. So, you know, it's not super long, but you can make the calls where you want. I'm gonna eyeball this. We are gonna make two. So I am gonna use the first one we cut down as a template for the second one, but we don't need to take any measurements. Hang on to these, they come in handy, I promise you. Okay, so the shorter side will be the base, and then this one is probably like an inch to an inch and a half, that will be the top portion. So we'll use this as a template and do one more because we're making a set of them. And 
and then what we're gonna do is bring them back inside and we are going to take like one of these square bases that I get at Hobby Lobby in a four pack. I think they end up being about 50 cents a piece. Super affordable, such a good price. And then we're gonna mark center. We're gonna do a multiplication sign on the back. You just go corner to corner and corner to corner. This helps us find center just so we have a general idea of where we're aiming for. And on the front, I kind of eyeballed it and just made a couple of marks so I knew where to put it down on the other side. Then you take a little bit of wood glue and you glue it into place and then I shot like three or four nails up from the bottom side to hold that into place a little bit more permanently than just glue. Then you can let this dry. Then I took a little bit of antiquing glaze and antique glazed the entire spindle thing and let that dry. Once the spindle is dry, I sanded down all the rough edges around the bottom. It gives it a little bit of dimension, but we don't want any like rough spots. It just makes it look a little bit better. And then we're gonna take a little bit of wood glue and put it on the top little two inch spot that we've left. And then we are gonna center our snowflake right on that spot and shoot in two to three nails to, to get that attached. And then you're gonna take a little bit of putty and fill in those holes and let that dry. It shouldn't take long. Now, you could repaint over those spots, but I really think it's unnecessary if you're gonna move on to this next step, which is then again, we're gonna sugarcoat it like we did on the other one. We're gonna take some Mod Podge and some Epsom salt, sprinkle that on a little bit of glitter, and you're gonna have these really cute sugared snowflakes, and then you're gonna let that really dry. That's it. <laughs> so it's like this sculptural thing with a snowflake. It's almost like a candlestick with a giant snowflake attached to the top, but it's not a candlestick so again I don't know what to name this but I plan on putting this on my fireplace mantle on either side for a statement piece on my mantle with all of the other snowflake stuff I just think it looks super super cute you could put this on your dining room table you could make these varying heights you could make some shorter ones you could make some taller ones I mean honestly the the possibilities are quite big with this project but each one of these snowflakes was around $4 to make. They totally, in my humble opinion, look like they could be $20 to $30 again, a piece. And it's so super cute. I love the impact that these make. Honestly, I know that we didn't get the spindle at the Dollar Tree, but it was $2.25-ish. I think spending that extra $1 is totally worth it and makes for such an adorable piece of winter holiday decor. So again, I hope that had you saying, wow, how did we do? <laughs> how many of you guys hit up Hobby Lobby's clearance section? I love it. I love doing it because you can find really cool things that you can hang on to and get a really, really good deal. So I found this sign on clearance for around $3 and it is very substantial, good size, item and I knew that just with a little paint and a little zhuzhing it could totally change the look of it. So here's what we are going to do. The first thing is you're going to pick a color of your choice. I decided to keep it really neutral. I picked I believe this is called mineral colored chalk paint and I chalk painted out the center about two to three coats to cover up that lettering and that wording. Then we are going to repeat that process that we did to the other snowflakes. Spray painting uh, both sides I think it would be fine you don't have to necessarily do the back on it but it does when you flip it over come and spray it at a different angle and it gets all those little nooks and crannies really good then you're gonna do that same sugar coating once the spray paints dried with the Mod Podge the Epsom salt the glitter you get the drill I just like sparkly snowflakes and it also again creates kind of a cohesive look with all of the projects you're doing so you could use all of these DIYs in different parts of your holiday 
holiday decor and it has a very consistent and cohesive look. So we've got our sugared things. Then we're gonna attach that snowflake. Now you can nail this into place, but since I already sugared it, I just decided to use some hot glue to glue this into place. I think it will be strong enough, honestly I do. And we're just gonna glue it in those four little spots at the end of the snowflake and attach it. Now we have a beautiful kind of three-dimensional looking art piece. Beautiful, it's gorgeous. Now you can hang this on the wall, set it on your mantle, put it on an end table. This one had kind of like a picture frame stand on the back of it. So there's a lot of possibilities with this. Again, even though we have only about five to six dollars into this project, I really think that this is like a 20 to 30 dollar looking piece from Dollar Tree items and a piece that I picked up off of the Hobby Lobby clearance. And I want you to expand your horizons. Now you don't have to get all of your items at the Dollar Tree for it still to be a Dollar Tree DIY because if you are willing to just spend a dollar or two more, the things that you can create are mind boggling. Now, I just love how this turned out and I hope you do too. Christmas trees have gotten really expensive over the years and I wanted to show you that either you could go into your own home and remake your existing Christmas wreath and give it new life or find one at a thrift store that you can zhuzh up with a little bit of love and help and give it new life. So either way, win-win. The first thing that I did was kind of deconstruct the things that I didn't like about the one that I purchased. So I got rid of anything that I just knew that I didn't want to have in the new one. After I got it completely ripped apart and down to the basics, which I did leave some of the pine cones, I did pull one of them out and I wanted to relocate it. Now it's time to add in the fresh new elements that are gonna give it new life. Now what I really love about the direction that I took on this wreath is I feel like this wreath could get you all the way from right now through the holidays and even after because while it does have a Christmas flair to it it's not super Christmassy specific if that makes sense so I just started adding I added some little faux apples from an old arrangement I did a couple of years ago that I had kept and tucked those in I used some dried orange slices from other projects so what this really became is like a mix of odds and ends of things that I had sitting around and it kind of had like a harvest vibe to it a little bit and then I had these little blueberry looking things and I glued those in I also added in additional greenery to fluff it up and also give it like variety and texture because a lot of times the wreaths that you can have are really one-dimensional with just one type of faux greenery and I really do feel like that if you mix in different types of greenery that it really helps elevate the look and it also gives it I don't know just a lot of interest and in texture so that's what we did there really isn't like a whole lot of technique to this you just look at it and try to like balance it out a little bit with the items that you're using then I found this bulletin board that was only three dollars and 99 cents and I knew that we could use this in our little project here now it did have like a cork board with um some fabric over it. I didn't like that look. And so I decided to rip out the back and I was really hoping that I was gonna find a smooth back of something that I could paint and then I could just paint the back of it and flip it around. No such luck, <laughs> not this time, but sometimes that does work out. But I just went into my pile and ended up finding a piece of plywood that I cut down to fit the dimensions and then I proceeded to paint that in black chalk paint because I wanted it to have a chalkboard feel. So once I got that painted in the black chalkboard paint, I let that fully dry and then I took some chalk and just rubbed it on there and then like wiped it down. So it kind of didn't have a fresh feel, but more of like a chalkboard feel that had been used. And then I proceeded to put that back into the frame. Still a great deal. I'm super excited about it. I thought the frame was kind of cute. Then I took a piece of furniture webbing and used it as a ribbon and I threaded that through our wire frame um, on the back. I didn't want to wrap the, the ribbon all the way around, but you could. I just felt like this was a little bit too wide for that and I really just wanted a little hint of it. And then once I got that looped through, I 
just duct taped it to the back so it's not permanent. We can switch it out with something else. We might even use a chalkboard to put our weekly menu on. There's things that you can do with a chalkboard. So I didn't really want to attach the wreath permanently, but this whole look looks so cute. I love the vibrant colors of it. Like I said, I really feel like this wreath could get you from fall through February, honestly. And it's just so vibrant, so beautiful. I'm really happy with the way it looked and I hope you enjoy it too. My next Christmas DIY is a nativity crush. So the very first thing that I did with this ladder is I decided to make a backdrop on the back and use a sheet. I used just a twin sized sheet and I took some more pipe cleaners and twist tied the top to kind of pinch pleat it together and I twist tied that into place. And then I kind of drew it out on the bottom and kind of tucked it underneath those boards. And then what I did is I took a, a little shop spotlight that I've had just for extra lighting. You can get them very inexpensively at Home Depot. They're basically just meant to go out in the shop it, and then they have like a s silver can light because I wanted a spotlight that's going to shine down on the underside. So I took that and I took a couple of green pipe cleaners and twisted them together and proceeded to twist tie this onto our ladder. And you might need to use a few of those to get it securely in place. Then I found a couple of star options and I decided to go with a larger star and use that at the top because we're creating like a place for a nativity. So the only way I could see to do this was it had a little wire hanger on it, but I needed to put a nail in the wood. And I figured it had seen some love, so one little tiny hole was not gonna hurt anything. So I hammered in a little nail, which I then took another twist tie and tied the wire hanger to that nail and got that into place. Now at this point I realized that it was a little off kilter that the rungs weren't totally level with one another, that the one side was a little bit lower. So it was just a little bit lower. So I took some two by fours and just lifted up the one side with that. Then we needed a base for where we could set our nativity. So I found a piece of scrap wood from my pile and it just happened to be the right size to slide right in on those bottom rungs of the ladder and I put that into place. Then once I had it looking the way I wanted to, I pulled the sheet over the, the one board to kind of cover up our base. So I found this really cool cathedral window on my shopping adventures. I do think that down the road I may do a slight flip on it, like change the color or whatever, but for right now I decided to leave it as is and tuck it right in the back there. I just thought that would make a nice backdrop for the Holy Family as like a cathedral style window. So that was kind of fun. And then I tucked three Christmas trees that I had from my collection in the back of this little creche that we are creating. And then I wanted to convert the outside of the ladder into a Christmas tree essentially. So what I did is I took a collection of greenery garlands that I've collected over the years and just proceeded to layer them up. I started with the cheap inexpensive ones from the Dollar Tree and they don't take up a lot of like real estate so but I had several of them so I still put those down and then I built it up with fuller ones and then I knew I wanted to have a little bit more texture so I tucked in some greenery picks and that really gave it some um, texture and then some of the garlands ha were pre-lit so it had those twinkly lights on it and then I also added some additional twinkle lights in varying sizes and I just kind of draped that over the top of it and I tucked them in here and there if they were really obnoxious into the the garlands and so here we are building up this Christmas tree essentially. Now I do want to note that I think it would be really cool and free if you had access to some pine trees to clip off a bunch of them and then just wire those into place onto the ladder rungs. Fresh would be awesome and you could 
really fill it up and make it nice and full and Christmas tree-esque. And then remember that wood slice from a couple of episodes back? I took that and decided to use that as the base for our little holy family. And then finally, I found this beautiful nativity that I had purchased off of Amazon and it was kind of larger in size and I tucked that onto the wood slice. And that was it. I am super thrilled with how this looks. It's a little bit atypical. It kind of meshes like a traditional Christmas tree with a nativity. And so it kind of gets the best of both worlds. And what we celebrate in our house is the birth of Christ. And I think that this is just kind of a good little marriage between the modern Christmas and the traditional Christmas. And I just thought it was kind of fun. And I really hope that you found some inspiration in it too. Okay, this next one was super, super easy. You're gonna love it if you're looking for an easy flip here. So I walked into a thrift store and I found this ginormous glass hurricane and it was beautiful. They actually had two. I kind of regret not getting the other one. I only got one of them. Buyer's remorse there, but it was ginormous. And I'm like, oh, that could be really fun. <laughs> so I snagged it and then I found a little smaller one, but still a decent sized hurricane. Okay, so I picked that one up. I had an idea in mind. I also got some thrifted ornaments that were in kind of some champagne gold colors, lots of different ones in like a little bin full of those. And I'm like, we are gonna combine this. So what I did is I took a couple of little mini Christmas trees and I just set them on the inside of the hurricane. And then to kind of embellish it a little bit more on the larger one, I filled the base of that full of Christmas ornaments. The other one was a little bit too small for that. So I tried it out first, it didn't really work good. So I just put a few little ornaments on the outside of that one, but them together look really good. This would look super beautiful on a shelf, which is where I may leave it. It would look beautiful on the center of a dining room table and maybe have some smaller ones on either side on a long table. But I just think this looks super classy and it was so, so easy. So sometimes you're taking a couple of things that aren't together and you put them together and it makes something extraordinary and I feel like that was the case this time around. Next up I saw this Santa sleigh. It was looking a little tired. It had some tired looking poinsettias and just it just was a little rough around the edges. It was forgotten and I knew that with just a little bit of extra help we could turn it into something amazing. The first thing that we needed to do to this sleigh is kind of deconstruct and get rid of all of the things that we didn't like about the arrangement to begin with, similar to what we did in the wreath. And we could just set that aside for later, maybe take it back to the thrift store if it's not your thing. But we just got rid of all the stuff we didn't like and got it down to the bones. So I decided to change the color of the sleigh. It was all gold and I took the outside portion and I turned it into a non-traditional kind of aqua blue, but it's all gonna work in the, the, the greater scheme of things here. And so I ended up having to do three to four coats of that craft paint. Maybe if you use chalk paint or something, it would go on a little bit thicker, but I did have to do three to four coats of that. Then I had also found this little reindeer that that was very similar. And I'm like, well, our slide kind of needs a reindeer. And it was a different color of gold. So I took some rub and buff and kind of tried to match it up to our reindeer a little bit more. And there was a couple of spots that were blemished on our slate anyway. So this was a good opportunity to correct those. So I just rubbed on a different color of rub and buff, which I love because it dries so quickly and it is such a good saturated color of gold. So I, I'm a huge fan of rub and buff. Then I added a whole bunch of little frosted greenery, Christmas greenery to really add some texture and fun. And now with our sleigh prepared, now it's time to jizz it up a little bit. So I took a whole bunch of 
these candy themed ornaments that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Then I just proceeded to tuck them into this little Santa sleigh, fill it up full of goodies. And then I took some, I made some what I call little poofies out of like some sparkly tool. And you just cut a little piece of that, twist it up, add it, attach it to a wire, tuck them down into place. And that was it. It was really, really simple. This is something anybody could do. I promise you, it's super easy. When it was done, I thought it was so super cute. Now, my plans for this is that we are gonna put this on, I think that there is a dining room table or there's some tables in this family room that we are going to make over. And I thought it would look really, really cute in here. But isn't that so much fun? You could can change it from a traditional look to a non-traditional look. Ours is full of candy, um, but it totally fits our theme. And you can make simple, easy fixes and get it to be spot on for what you need. So this next one could have honestly been left alone if we really wanted to. It was really cute. It was this white ornament with gold polka dot accents and it was cute, but I thought we could elevate it just a little bit. So I found this adorable, gold sequins bow. It's an ornament that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and I knew that we could just attach that and it would make it super cute. Now you could do it traditional but I decided to do it off kilter just a bit off to the side and then just as another idea I decided to tuck in a lot of little Christmas greeneries around the bow that's optional. I didn't glue mine in but if you were going to use it then do it that way I would glue it in. I didn't glue it in because I, I wanted to have the flexibility of being able to use them again, but I did tuck them in there really good. But isn't this super cute? It's so fun and so sparkly and so festive for this time of year. And I hope you enjoyed that super easy thrift flip. Up next is an outdoor nativity, and it's gonna be a lot of fun, I promise. So I went over to the home improvement store and bought a four by four foot piece of three quarter inch plywood. I had my printout and I, you can fold it together, you can cut off the edges, but you're gonna piecemeal it all together. It does go in order. So once you have it all taped together, you're gonna wanna tape it down. There was about a three or four inch gap on the bottom of this paper and I left it there because I wanted it to be just a little bit beefier on the bottom. So I have a stack of graphite paper, but you could use one sheet and just keep moving it down. But I, I just filled it all up with the graphite paper I had available because you can reuse it over and over. So I just covered the entire thing with graphite paper under our printable. And then you go about tracing the entire image on to your piece of plywood. And then once you've got it on, you peel it all off and keep that graphite paper for another project because it will totally be good. And then we took it outside. Now this next part is like, I don't know, it's like, adult cutting <laughs> is what I'm gonna call it. So all you're gonna do is drill a series of pilot holes using a spade or a large drill bit. All you need is several in your piece of plywood to create holes that you can stick your jigsaw into. Now I know I'm gonna get comments about how I should get a scroll saw or a band saw. I know those tools are amazing, but I don't have the space for it. So a jigsaw is what I have to work with and I think that that will work for a lot of people. A jigsaw was the very first saw that I ever bought and they're fun to have and they don't take up a lot of room and you can do a lot of fun stuff with it. So all you need to do is jigsaw this way, that way, cut away all of the excess and then you are left with this nativity scene and isn't that fun? <laughs> and then we needed a way for it to stand up and so I just did some 45 degree cuts. I think the pieces were about 18 inches long and I put some wood glue on them and nailed them into place on either side. 
And then you have a really cute nativity scene. Now here's where I kind of debated between painting it white, staining it, or painting it black. I didn't really know. Ultimately, I went with white because I thought outside it would look really good um, to pop off. And I'm so glad I did. <laughs> this would be really easy with a paint sprayer, but I couldn't find it. <laughs> My house is crazy right now. I'm the thick of Christmas. So anyways, I just did it with a brush and it, it all worked out. It was pretty warm though. And then you have an amazing piece. Now you could use this indoors if you wanted to, but th the idea of this for me was to put it outdoors at night. You can use like a spotlight to light it and it would look really, really beautiful. I just think this is really awesome. And for a, like a two by four and a piece of plywood, you have an amazing piece of decor that would have pro probably cost you, you know, 150 to 200 dollars but you did it for pennies on the dollar and it's really special so i hope you enjoyed that one our next diy decor piece is a christmas advent calendar and before we get into it i love how this turned out so the first thing i did is i picked up a quarter inch piece of plywood from the hardware store and I got a two by four foot sheet. I had found a frame where the inner dimensions were about 18 inches by 30 inches. This is something that I picked up at the thrift store. We cut it down to those dimensions on my table saw. With that cut down, I made my own kind of stain out of antiquing glaze, but I added a little bit of white and a little bit of water because I didn't want it to have kind of the warmer wood. I wanted to lighten it up a little bit and that's just what we did. So I washed that on there. I didn't quite make enough, so I had to make a little bit more, but we got that on there. And because it was so warm outside, it dried up really quick. And the reason I did the antiquing glaze versus a traditional stain is it just simply dries up quicker and it has a similar look. You could use stain if you had that on hand. Then I went about spray painting my thrift store frame black uh, because I, I wanted it to take it from the cherry kind of finish that it had and give it a nice flat black paint. Now that our stain or our glaze was dried, I went about drilling some holes. And so I just created a grid. Because this is an advent calendar, we're gonna do 25 little holes for some little buckets that we're gonna add in just a second here. So I created a grid, marked it all out, started with center, and then I believe it was spaced every 3.25 inches, if you want to know that. And then I just drilled all these holes for some hooks that we're gonna add in just a second. And then I found an, a design that said Merry Christmas in Cricut Design Studio, and I created a vinyl decal out of that using permanent vinyl. I weeded it, and then I put my transfer tape on it and then we put that onto our board. Then I went about screwing in all of the little hooks and these are just little cup hooks that you can find easily around and we screwed those all into place. I also cut out some, I think it was one and three quarter inch circles using some craft colored cardstock, and I cut those out on my Cricut machine. You could cut these out by hand, but it sure does make it easy to cut them out on the machine. And then I had some one and a half inch chalkboard stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I stuck those onto our little circle tags. And then I I went ahead and added our numbers with some other white permanent vinyl on each one, just added the numbers and it looked super cute. But I wanted to add even another layer of finished detail, I guess you would say. And I pulled out my crop dial and used the smaller hole punch on that to create a little hole. Then I took these tiny brad nails in this pewter finish and I stuck them through the hole to give it the feel that there was like a nail in it. And so it just is another added detail. Then I went about hot gluing each one of these numbers onto one of these buckets. Now, if you're interested in any of the products, I will link as many of them as I can in the description box. Then we needed to put it into our frame and you can see that I got a quarter inch plywood and these little hooks were a little bit 
bit thicker than that. Um, but I did have another quarter inch foam that came with the frame. So I just put that on the back of it and it protected all the hooks that were poking through. And then I put that right into the frame. And then I went ahead and hung all of my buckets onto the advent calendar. Now, there's a lot of options of how you could approach this advent calendar. I just put one verse of the nativity story in each bucket for each day, plus a few treats for my boys. <laughs> so it will be something fun and exciting that they could do, but you could put a fun carol in each day. So you sing a carol every day, or you could put a fun little trivia question. There's so many options. So use your imagination. But overall, I just really love how this advent calendar turned out. I think it looks super high end, super cute. And if you were to purchase something like this, it would be so much more expensive than what we invested in it. I love it. I just think it is so cute. It's such a great interactive activity that you can do with your family this time of year. And I hope you enjoyed that. Okay, so these next few DIYs are gonna be like a little deer themed, which is actually kind of cool because not only would they be good through the holiday season, but you could use it beyond even into January, February, because I think that that is kind of neutral into winter. So the first thing that I did is I took a wood round about 18 inches, I believe. And then I just took that antiquing glaze that I used before, but this time I didn't change the color of it. I just wiped it on and let that dry. And then what I did is I came back in and did some two inch wide stripes and I taped them off really good. And then I came in with some gold spray paint and spray painted them on and let that dry. Now, while that was drying, I took a deer head that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and I sprayed a couple of coats of satin white spray paint on it. Easy peasy so far, right? <laughs> then what we did is we peeled back the to reveal our stripes and it looked really cool. And then I set that aside and then I took a, a strip of fairy lights and I glued the little switch onto the bottom. And then I also took a couple of pieces of Scrabble and glued those into a couple of strategic spots to kind of give it some little height and dimension. And then we glued that onto our stripe wood round on a diagonal. So that I just thought would create a little bit of interest. And then I took the string of fairy lights and kind of wrapped that around our deer head. And then I kind of threaded it through to kind of tighten it up since it, the neck kind of went like that. And then we just tucked it into place. was it simple but super super chic right it looks so cute kind of backlit three-dimensional i love the way this looks and i hope you do too next up i wanted to create another little centerpiece idea so what i did is i took a large dough bowl and then i took a couple of pieces of some dry floral foam and put them in on an angle and then i used some tape to kind of hold them down into place then i set two champagne gold deer on an angle in a vi little vignette and then i had a little mini christmas tree that i stuck in between them and then i just proceeded to do a whole bunch of different types of Christmas green, pine needles, and all of that into place. And I just had a good time. decided to add a couple of little extra embellishments by way of some Christmas bells, little miniature ones, and then a couple of pieces of some champagne gold um, sugar greenery. And that was it. I promise you that this is something that you can totally do. This does not take any sort of skill. It took probably less than 10 minutes. And I think it looks super high end, super chic. I could see this as a centerpiece or you could 
find a really nice spot for it on a shelf. It looks super, super cute. I love the way it looks and I hope you do too. And this next DIY is so super easy. I almost feel guilty calling it a DIY, but I found this amazing, adorable kind of deer art on Etsy and all printed it out at Walgreens. And I just put it in a frame that I've had that I'm constantly switching out with different fresh art. And it's just a fun way to kind of bring in that uh, winter vibe into your decor. I love how it looks. It's so super cute. Such an easy way to bring in a high-end feel into your holiday decor without spending a fortune. Up next, we are gonna turn this end table into a Christmas tree box. The first thing we need to do is attach the legs to the, the top of this end table that we're gonna actually end up flipping over. And this was really easy to do. A little hack for you is it had some double-sided screw dowels. And the easiest way to do this is to actually put them inside a drill tighten it up real nice and use the drill to press them into the wood and get that started that way. It just is easier than trying to do it by hand. And then you're gonna take the legs and manually screw those on. And that takes a minute, but it's not very hard to do, I promise. Then we needed to get some dimensions because we wanted to enclose it and make a box. Now, we could have built one, but this is, really gives us a nice, easy foundation to start with. So if you're new doing construction, this is gonna be very helpful to you. So what I did is I took a quick trip to the home improvement store and bought a sheet of masonite, which is $14.99, which is a fantastic deal for a four by eight foot sheet of plywood, essentially. What I like about masonite is it paints up very nicely. And so that will help us out in the long run. I went ahead and had them cut it down for me a couple of strips, 13 and three quarter inches long, just so it would fit into my car a little bit easier. And it takes a little bit of the work out of it for me. So then I set up my miter saw and then proceeded to cut them down into squares because we're going to need 13 and three quarter inch squares for each side so four total and then to attach them we just take some wood glue and my nail gun and nail them into place and let that dry with those attached i went ahead and took some lattice trim which is pretty flat trim skinny and about two inches wide and i cut that down longer strips on the side and shorter in the middle. You're gonna do this in a front and back sections. And the reason why is because you're gonna go to edge to edge and then those dimensions will change for the inner pieces, if that makes sense. And then you're gonna just use some glue and nails to attach that as well. You're going to not want to nail in that open area because it's you don't want any hazards down the road. So the glue with a couple of tack nails on the edge will be just fine, but anywhere you can nail on the other area, go for it and it will be nice and sturdy. So once you've got that on, I had originally planned to do an X. So I'm just going to throw that out there as an idea. I ended up just doing one diagonal, kind of like a barn door. And the reason is, is I didn't buy enough of the lattice trim. So. <laughs> and I thought it looked fine. So, but you could do the X, you could just leave it open. Um, there's a lot of flexibility on this project and you can customize it however you want to. You could use beadboard if you'd like as well. So there's, there's some flexibility and, and this was really easy to put together. So with that all built, all we need to do is take a little putty, fill in all of the nail holes, the cracks and all of that, let that dry. Then you go back in with a little bit of uh, fine grit sandpaper and sand that down. And then I primed it first and then I did several coats of white satin spray paint, gave it a nice finish. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want any runs. So just do several light coats. It does dry rather quickly. So then I took a four and a half foot Christmas tree and I put that in our base inside uh, I also put a blanket to kind of hold it into place because our box was not big enough for the actual stand that it comes with. But if you pack it in there nice and tight, it will support it and it will be just fine. So I may decorate this tree down the road, but for now, I love how this Christmas tree box turned out. 
you could definitely use this for a taller tree if it was a little bit more of a slender base you could even go up to like a six or six and a half foot so use the christmas tree you want and it was just a very easy way to put it all together it looks great i'm super happy with this ikea hack and i hope you enjoyed it too so next up is a really easy ikea hack so what we're going to do to this pillow is just do a really cute iron on vinyl to this and i found this image in cricut design space this is not sponsored by them i just found it there it said believe in the magic of christmas and i thought that would be really cute on the pillow so i cut that out in a glitter heat transfer vinyl you make sure you put it on reverse and then i use my easy press to press it down onto my pillow it was at 330 degrees for 30 seconds and that was it. And then I flipped it over and I did it for an additional like 15 to 20 seconds, let it cool a little bit. And then I peeled it back and that was it. And then I paired it with this really cute Santa pillow set. It comes with three other pillows and I'm gonna use all of them in there. And I just absolutely love how this turned out. It's so cute paired with this little Santa pillow. I love the little white fluffy pillows. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do those ones there or not we'll see but it is just such a fun look and i hope you enjoy it super easy and i just love how it turned out now if you've been watching my channel for a while you will know that it won't truly be christmas season unless i did some kind of lantern <laughs> it seems like i've done one every year and this year is no exception the first thing i did is remove the little hook that was on top because i wanted it kind of have a street lamp look not like a hanging lantern look so i just got rid of that and it was fine and then what i did is i attached it to some dollar tree candlesticks that i recently came across across there that are metal and they had some that were varying heights and I took also from Dollar Tree a little epoxy kit that I get. I love to use this because it cures really fast and it is a very strong hold, stronger than an E6000 so I really like that. So all you have to do is clip off the top and squeeze all the contents out, mix it all together and that activates the epoxy. Then I just wipe some on the top of the candlestick and st stuck it to the center of our little red lamp. And then it cures in about five minutes. Now on that one, it was a little bit, there wasn't a whole lot for it to grip on the skinnier topped one and so I once it was kind of attached I went around the rim on the underside and wiped on some more of that epoxy resin and in about five minutes that will cure up and then you can move on to the next part so then I took a piece of one inch black ribbon and I wanted to bring some of that black from the bottom part to the top and I glued that on. Now you'll see me here attaching it with hot glue gun. This was a mistake so I'm gonna little help you out and hopefully correct it for you. I would recommend using something like an E6000 or a Gorilla Glue or something like that, not hot glue. And I'll tell you why in just a second. Then I took a couple of clippings of some Christmas type greenery in gold and there was like some berries and holly type look going on and I glued that on top as well to just give it like a fun vibe. And that was it. Super, super easy, right? And then all you need to do is stick a little tea light in the candle holder and light it. And that is why you don't want to use the hot glue because once the flame gets going, it gets fairly hot. And I didn't really think that through, but of course it would. <laughs> And then it kind of came undone, but you are going to learn from my little mistake and use an adhesive such as like super glue or a Gorilla Glue or something that won't undo when it gets hot. So there you go. But overall, I really think this is an adorable look. It would look great on a mantle. It would look great on a dining table and you could make several of them especially if you were doing like a long dining room table I think that that would look really cute to have several staggering heights down that table and I just love the way it looks and it took no time at all probably like a five minute project but has a really cute look so I hope you enjoyed that so for our next tag I am using the globe out of a 
previous DIY IKEA hack where I made over a light fixture to kind of knock off a Pottery Barn one and I got rid of the original globe light cover for that project but I hung on to it because I knew that I could use it in a future project and that one is this one. So what I decided to do with this globe light fixture is first I it had kind of like a greasy film on the outside. I'm not sure what that was from but I made sure to clean it really well with a glass cleaner and get off all of that residue. Then what I did is I simply took some Mod Podge and covered the outside of this globe light fixture and took some Epsom salt and sprinkled that on to mimic the look of snow. But I wanted to have a little bit more glitter so I also took some loose glitter and sprinkled that over the top and I did the underside first and then I did the outside and repeated all of the steps and what does it kind of look like? <laughs> Hopefully a snowball at this point and so to do a couple of them together. What I did is I also took some frosted ornaments from the Dollar Tree that kind of mimicked the look and repeated the process on those as well, removing the little ornament hanging part. And then as you saw in that segment, we ended up taking another slice of that tree because it was special to our family as well and we wanted to have a meaningful memento to keep. And so I used it as a base to set our globe on because I thought it would look really beautiful and it did and um, so I set those on there and then I shoved some little fairy lights in the inside of our globe light as well as the small little ornaments and then I tucked in a whole bunch of Christmas greenery to kind of feel festive and feel like some really cute snowballs. Well, I also ended up taking a couple of some styrofoam balls that also kind of looked a little bit like a snowball to complete the look. I think this looks so cute. I think it would be a super cute centerpiece idea for this Christmas and winter season. This is an awesome project because not only will this get you through the Christmas and holiday season, but it's a real true winter one that could last you well into like January, February, depending on if you are wanting to have a winter look that long. Now, Ikea was a little bit limited on their Christmas stuff just because it was early in the year but we were able to find a few things, including some amaryllis, which is traditionally known as a Christmas flower. I love it. And so I just grabbed a couple of those and knew that we could do something very simple with this. And all I did is I took a pot that already had some foam in it from another project and I took our amaryllis, cut it down, staggered the height a little bit and pressed that right in the center of our foam in the pot. Then I took some moss from the Dollar Tree, put that on the base and then to kind of pinch it into place, I made some little wire pins and pinched that down into place and that was it. Super, super simple. I think it's really cute. Amaryllis is very Christmassy and I think that you could add this into any like Christmas decor that you have. Super, super easy, right? <laughs> I promise you can do this. In the quiet evening, snow is falling. And from every window. One of the fun finds that we found on our trip were some last season pine tree gift boxes. I thought they were super cute, and I just wanted to do something really quick to elevate them and just switch it up a little. And so I cut out a couple of vinyl decals on my Cricut machine and just stuck them on. One said, Oh, Christmas tree, and then the other one had a really cute, fun Christmas saying. And it was just such a simple thing to do to these gift boxes. And I'll totally use them this coming Christmas season to put maybe like fun jewelry in, Christmas treats, whatnot, but I thought it was just a fun little thing and I hope you enjoyed that too. And next we are going to be making a giant, approximately two foot cupcake. <laughs> Not edible, but so super cute. And being on the other side of it, 
I can't even begin to tell you. It is so much fun. So let's get started. The first step is I took a Dollar Tree laundry basket. If you shop the Dollar Tree, you've seen these all over. And we are going to take some of their white pool noodles. I don't think the color really matters all that much, but I just went with white <laughs> because we're going to be turning it into a frosting swirl. And I took some white duct tape and I duct taped our noodle in kind of a spiral fashion working up. I made sure to really duct tape it really well around the rim so it wouldn't lift up in any area. And then as I worked my way up, I just used some duct tape to hold it into place and just continually work. I used about two pool noodles. And then I, at the end, kind of cut it on an angle and taped it down as you see me doing here. Then we added a little faux cherry on top. I just took a round styrofoam ball. I don't remember the size. It's about three inches, I would guess. And I glued that down into place. Then I decided to take up plastering. I have never worked with plaster before. I'm like, how hard could it be? <laughs> Apparently it's a little bit more complicated than I realized, but we did get the job done. Basically what it says to do is mix two parts of the plaster to one part water, cold water. And honestly, I think that that is a little too runny. So I would suggest doing it maybe two, between two and three to one part water and mix it up because I made a ginormous mess <laughs> doing this. But all I did is I just put gloves on my hand and just smeared it all over the top. And this does not have a very long working time. So you have to work fairly quickly. And I got on the first coat and then I let it dry and it dries about 20 to 30 minutes. I didn't think that that was going to be thick enough. So I repeated that again and put on a second coat. And then I let it set up for 24 hours to dry. Then I came back in and sanded it and I realized that it was going to still be a little bit too bumpy for my liking. So I took it inside and I didn't really record this very well, but I took out my dry decks joint compound and I started smearing that on um, over the top of it because I feel like I usually get a little bit smoother finish with that. I do like the plaster because it dries super, super hard. So I would still say use the, the plaster. You're going to get a nice firm finish, but to finish it out and get a little bit smoother coat, just smear on that joint compound. I got my hands wet and kind of just smoothed it out. The, the water really did help smooth it. And then I let that fully dry. You'll know it's dry when it stops being cold to the touch. Just trust me on that. <laughs> and then once it's dry, we gave that a good sanding once again. Then I just took some white craft paint and painted out the entire frosted area and let that dry. Once that was dry, I painted out our cherry in a red chalk paint. And the reason I went with red chalk paint is because red is really hard to get a saturated color, but with chalk paint, it goes on just much thicker. And rather than doing three or four coats of a craft paint, I just decided to go with the chalk paint, but the chalk paint is not the finish that we want. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> then the fun began. I took some matte Mod Podge and really gooped it on the, the top of our white paint. And then I took a bag of these foam beads and started sprinkling them on, throwing them on. And I really had a lot of fun, but I made another ginormous mess. So this, this process is messy, but it's going to have a good result, I promise. And I will probably be vacuuming up these foam beads for like ever. <laughs> and so then we let that fully dry and then we took it outside and I sprayed it in a matte Mod Podge 
spray form and the reason I did that was to really make sure that the sprinkles stayed on there good. There was a couple that blew off but for the most part all of them stayed on and it really did make it stay on there much better so I would not skip that step. And then once that was dry you're going to want to take a high gloss Mod Podge because we want the cherry to shine and just do a coat of that on the cherry and that was it for the top part but then you have this open basket on the bottom and it looks a little weird. <laughs> so the next part you're going to do is you're going to take 10 inches of gold poster board or poster board of your choice and cut three 10 inch strips in that. And then you're going to just fold it accordion style back and forth one inch thick. And you're going to go back and forth and back and forth. And then you're going to attach all of them together. I used hot glue to attach them. Um, so you have one big long one. And then we're going to start wrapping it around our basket and you're going to want to use a good hot glue like a good strong hold and i ran a bead around the bottom and i did do it a little bit around the top but i did find that i needed to go in after the fact and kind of glue little sections of the top portion to the cupcake and then to finish it off then you just overlap it to when it looks good and glue it into place and it looks so good but the end result you guys <laughs> this is so cute i absolutely love it it is so large but it really looks like a giant cupcake it turned out so good and i was a little nervous because i'd never worked with plaster and during the process i'm like oh my word this is not going to turn out this looks so stupid but i promise all those little extra steps and then by the time you add the sprinkles on it looks so cute does it not look cute? I just love this. Now this might be a little large to put on a Christmas tree, but we might set this next to it. But I thought you could do a little smaller version by using this size of a basket and maybe like cutting the pool noodle in half or something like that to make it large but still able to fit on a Christmas tree but we are still gonna use this giant cupcake because it's so darn cute <laughs> and I cannot wait to see it next to our tree. All right, so let's get on to our next DIY. This one was a surprise hero. It really turned out cute. We are gonna be making some gumdrops, some sugared gumdrops. How fun is that? So I ordered some large Easter eggs that were made out of foam off of Amazon. But if you have some foam Easter eggs or some Easter eggs that you could pull out of your stash, maybe you could make these with what you have on hand. I didn't have that. So I cut off like the bottom quarter to third, right as it starts to go down into an Easter egg tip. And we set those aside for later. Maybe we can use them for something. I'm sure we can. Then we just focused on the larger section, which I then, painted the bottom and all of the sides and you're gonna need to do anywhere from two to three coats depending on how translucent your paint is and how saturated of a look you want to go for and then we had one white one i painted it white <laughs> I don't know if that was completely pointless or not, but I just thought it needed a good painted base to start out with. So maybe you don't need to paint the white one. I don't know. Then we are going to sugar them. Now you're gonna need some glitter and you want to go for more of the chunky glitter and it will look like a white, but it will be like a translucent white, if that makes sense. And I actually picked up two kinds that were on sale at Hobby Lobby. The larger one was just like a really big, loose glitter. And then the smaller one had a little bit larger, like sequin pieces in it that w gave us a little bit more chunky effect. So then I took some gloss Mod Podge and mixed in some of the regular larger glitter one um, because I wanted to make sure that some glitter got in it um, but I also wanted a chunky effect so we're gonna have this like add some layers here so I started really saturating it and I might have gone a little bit overboard but it still worked out in the end 
And then once, while it was still wet, I took the chunkier glitter and shook that on all over. And I had an individual piece of paper under each one of our gumdrops to catch that because so we can reuse it for later. So just keep that in mind. And we just proceeded to sugar the heck out of our little faux gumdrops and they were looking so cute. And then you wanna let this fully dry. Don't be alarmed if there's little white spots as it dries. It does end up getting more translucent as it dries. Then we needed a way to hang this and I ended up doing a really thick white shimmery glittered ribbon. Maybe I should have gone with something a little bit more subtle because then I don't know if you can, it makes it not look like a, a gumdrop if you do this. So pick out whatever ribbon you want if you're replicating this look. But I made little wire pins by just cutting off a couple of inches of wire, folding it in half. If you have floral pins, you can use those too. And then we just pinned those right into the center of our gumdrop ornaments and I I can't even tell you. I, well, I love every single one of our candy themed DIYs, but this one was so cute. I love how it turned out. They really do look like huge gumdrops. I think they are super adorable. I didn't break out a Christmas tree to display these on yet. I just, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I couldn't break out my Christmas tree yet, but it's coming and hopefully you get the, the idea of this, but it is so cute. Love how this looks. Our next candy themed ornament was so easy. Like honestly, this is super, super easy. The first thing we did is cut some half inch dowels, I believe was the width of those to 18 inches. And then I took them outside and spray painted the wood dowels in a white spray paint to give it kind of like a lollipop stick that we're gonna use. Then I found these solid colors I think they're about six to eight inch balls from the Dollar Tree and got them in various colors. I don't know if this is like a wasted effort or not. I did take some Gorilla Glue and stick it on the end of the stick, but I knew that that would take a while to dry. So in the meantime, I just proceeded to take some clear packing tape and tape it into place as well. So you might skip the glue, I don't know, but I was my thinking was that it would dry over time and make it a little more sturdy, but it, <laughs> It might not even be necessary. I'm just going to caveat that. And then I just took some clear cellophane and wrapped that around our lollipop and then took some more clear packing tape and taped that into place. Then I found some matching curly ribbon to like almost every single ball, almost an identical match at Dollar Tree and proceeded to peel off the back, but also hot glue it to make sure it was really st gonna stick on there and not just pop off later. And then we wrapped that around the base of the lollipop and kind of just squeezed it in. That's it. So easy, right? But they look really like giant lollipops and they are so, so super cute. My oldest son said it was his favorite of all of the candy themed ones. Um, so you be the judge of that. I don't know. I really think that these turned out cute and I cannot wait to get them attached to the Christmas tree. Our next candy themed DIY is the easiest. It is so super easy. We are going to be making some giant Hershey Kisses. <laughs> fake ones, of course. <laughs> the first thing we're gonna do is you're gonna take these Dollar Tree funnels, they come in packs of three, I am just for this episode purposes creating, taking the largest ones, but you can make them in all sizes and use all of them. So you can have like small, medium, large Hershey kisses. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that little bump out on the edge because we don't want it just making it misshaped any bit. So I have some industrial scissors that I cut that off with, but you can use tin snips, whatever you have on hand to get that little bump off out. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just doesn't need to jut out we very far. Then we needed a way to hang it. So I took my drill and drilled a hole through the funnel. It's super easy. It's plastic. It, it drills right through easy peasy. Then I just took some wire and wired that through and twisted it into place and like shimmied the rough part down and hid that near the funnel. And you, 
I think it's good for this one because it's just gonna disappear into the tree, so that's awesome. Then I have a free printable little Hershey Kisses, little the little label thing. <laughs> and all you need to do is just cut those down to size. And if you're doing like a smaller one, you could cut this in half, but if you're doing the larger one, I would use the whole thing. And you are then gonna take a glue stick and glue it on kind of like a 45 degree angle on the top part of that funnel. Then you're gonna take a big piece of tin foil and wrap it all together and make it look like a Hershey Kiss. And that's it. <laughs> so super easy, right? These took literally about five minutes to make. They were so easy, super, super fast. And they are so adorable. I cannot wait to see a whole tree full of Hershey Kisses given all kinds of love. So fun, so easy, love it. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the very end. If you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.